pilot tonight, Bryce Bullock. I'm with the 90th Fighter Squadron 3rd Wing at J Bear in Alaska. It's spelled uh, B R Y C E W O O L L E T T. As part of Red Flag Alaska 22 3, uh, we're primarily uh, executing escorts, so offensive counter air or defensive counter air, practicing uh, how to uh, protect our strike or our airlift assets to get them into a hostile, contested environment. At Red Flag, we fly the J-Park, so the Joe Pacific Alaska um, range uh, complex, and it consists of both an air-to-air -air and a surface-to-air threat environment, so we can practice against both surface-to-air missiles as well as um, hostile fighters. Originally, uh, I'm from the Royal Australian Air Force, so I flew uh, F-18 Hornets back in Australia. Uh, I was selected to uh, conduct the exchange program, so uh, here at the 90th Fighter Squadron, we've had an embedded Australian fighter pilot uh, flying with us uh, all the way back to 1942. So over the years, we continually rotate an Australian exchange pilot uh, into Alaska uh, to fly with the guys here. And then there's a reciprocal exchange where a USAF uh, fighter pilot goes down to Australia and flies with our squadrons down there. Uh, the tour itself is three years. So I'm currently two years into a three year exchange. So I've got about 12 months to go uh, prior to heading back down to Australia. The exchange is a great opportunity to um, fly with the US Air Force, learn about the way that they attack problems, the way that they do business, and then hopefully uh, on the other hand they can learn uh, the way that Australia approaches tactical problems and overall improve our understanding of uh, each other's operations. So if we were to ever to, if we were ever called upon to actually uh, uh, do anything for real, we would have a better understanding uh, and hopefully a better ability to actually uh, achieve mission success. Red Flag is a great opportunity to actually get Australian squadrons in Alaska to fly directly with our US counterparts uh, against a threat realistic um, mission set. So with me being embedded here at the 90th Fighter Squadron, it's awesome to see the Australian uh, squadrons here in Alaska and how well we're able to uh, integrate and then operate with our US counterparts. On a much smaller and shorter timeline, um, we're able to uh, learn how the US approaches tactical problems. We're able to show the US how we approach tactical problems, uh, but Red Flag only being two weeks long, there's a limited uh, scope to actually be able to do that. So with the exchange program, with me being here for three years, uh, fully embedded in a US fighter squadron, it's an awesome uh, opportunity to actually really fundamentally understand how the US Air Force does business so we can better operate in the future. I get to fly this beast, which is pretty awesome. So um, I flew Hornets back in Australia, the F-18. It was a fourth generation fighter aircraft. So being able to come here and fly the F-22, the world's uh, first fifth generation aircraft, uh, is a really awesome experience and an unbelievable opportunity. Alaska uh, has been awesome. So like I said, the um, 90th Fighter Squadron has had uh, Australian exchange pilots for uh, decades previous to me. So uh, arriving in Alaska, everyone's been extremely friendly. They're used to having Aussies around the squadron and, and everyone's been super, super welcoming. So it's really uh, made Alaska feel like home and made us feel very welcome and part of the team uh, here at JV. The E-7 was uh, one of the first uh, airborne command and control aircraft that employed a uh, electronically scanned radar, which uh, gives, uh, gives the aircraft a significant number of uh, um, performance advantages over traditionally uh, or traditional mechanically scanned radar. So we're here uh, to provide uh, airborne command and control to each of the uh, red flag uh, um, mission serials. Uh, and in doing so, uh, it's our job to basically uh, um, detect the uh, airborne picture, the, uh, the posture of uh, um, adversary aircraft, uh, and provide that information to uh, the blue fighter aircraft or the blue package aircraft uh, by both voice channels and uh, digital channels. Australia and the US have a uh, very long and deep um, history together. Uh, we know each other very well. We, we share very, very similar values and, and uh, cultures. So um, it, it really is very easy, is the sincere answer there. We, we nearly speak the same language, you know, uh, so there's a little bit of 5% of difference there. And so that's, what, that's why Red Flag is important uh, because uh, um, throughout the, the planning and execution process, necessarily, there's just a couple of things we do slightly differently. Uh, and um, certain words or certain ideas have certainly uh, slightly different meanings so it's important to understand those uh, differences so that uh, when uh, if we're operating in a contingency together we, we really understand where each of us is coming from and so that's that's a lot of the benefit that that's uh, that comes from this exercise 
uh, in addition to just the, the incredible training opportunities we get from um, operating in uh, large force employment activities just with, with such a large scale of resources and aircraft. Red Flag is designed and intended to be uh, a very complex uh, and intense um, iteration so uh, compared to the sort of uh, normal lower scale training that we do day to day back home and um, much more complex, uh, many many more aircraft and assets both, both on the air and in the ground uh, and uh, a large group of uh, separate teams working together so it's quite a complex and long planning process so uh, typically, for each mission, the crews will spend a whole day in planning, uh, which each of, the, each of the different package leads taking care of their elements and then those elements being integrated together uh, to conduct the whole mission the next day. So yes, compared to normal day-to-day -day training, significantly more complex uh, and uh, you know, a significantly higher tier of training available. So most of the crews, uh, when they come to a, an exercise such as Red Flag, they will do uh, some workup training at home that will be both uh, airborne and simulator based training so uh, we, we have a, uh, a, a number of simulators at home that uh, work for both the uh, the front end the pilots and the mission crew who work at the back end and so we will start to do uh, typical serials that are similar to what those crews are expecting to experience at red flag itself so that we, we, we as much as possible tend to pre-prime them uh, and in that sense um, they're prepared to get much more value out of the uh, the live activity when it starts it's simply a privilege to be here and partake in this uh, activity. There's Red Flag Alaska is one of a suite of uh, activities that we uh, partake uh, in with the USAF in the Pacific region. And uh, Red Flag Alaska is a perennial favourite. It's a, a magnificent exercise and a fantastic spot. And it's, the weather's normally a little bit nicer than this.